You ever got that distended feeling in your stomach? Almost feels like you got a basketball underneath your shirt or your jeans. Feeling like it stays that way forever. You feel five pounds heavier. You can poke it. If you're a female, like you become pregnant or just that bloat as human beings. We all deal with it. I'm going to show you some fast ways to reduce it, get rid of it, and hopefully prevent it from ever coming again. What is driving the bloat in you? Many causes to it. We're going to talk about them to really break them down to give you an understanding of what you you're doing to create that in the first place, how do you avoid it? I think it's very important. First one out of the gates is FODMAPs. Now this is fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, I have them all written down here, monosaccharides and polyols. So these starches and complex carbohydrates get into the gut and this affects a lot more people than is really talked about and it feeds the wrong bacteria. When you feed a bacteria, it produces byproduct just like you and I do. And so those little buggers produce air, that air combined with liquid in your gut creates the effervescence. So that's what's feeding it. So a lot of times with someone that has a FODMAPs issue or a sensitivity to these foods, these could be potatoes, they could be starches, these could be dairy foods, they could be onions, garlics, artichokes, cashews, can create these kind of problems in people. And so there's many of them that do do it. Cabbage can be a big one, broccoli, cauliflower. These are foods that I really, really like. Brussels sprouts, some of them oats, apples. We talked about dairy products. Anything potato-based can have a lot of these in there and then it creates that that feeding of the wrong bacteria. Also along those lines is SIBO, which is small intestine bacteria overgrowth. And so bacteria that is supposed to reside mostly in the large intestine makes its way up to the small intestine. And so in this area of your digestive tract, you can get a lot of distension because the wrong people are living in the wrong location. We're getting crowded. It's like a crowded city and they're, they're eating and they're producing, they're eating and they're producing and it creates this bloat, let alone a lot of digestive system distress and autoimmune related conditions. So that overgrowth of bacteria can be addressed to reduce it down. We're gonna talk about those things in a moment. Next could be just digestive distress, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, gastroparesis, when the stomach just empties too slowly. It's just creating a lot of backup in the system. Constipation, of course, being one of those as well. Sugars can do this. Sugar alcohols can also do this. Eating too much fructose, not only hard on the liver, but it can create the bloat. Sugar alcohols, they don't absorb very well. A system in the body can't really break them down. So they enter the bloodstream and then they end up in the digestive system and they're passed through the system. So a lot of what is eaten, 90 plus percent of it, is eventually just passed out. And so that can create digestive distress, flatulence, let alone bloating for a lot of people that do have them. So sorbitols, urethritols, even stevia sometimes can create this response. And then finally, hormone changes. It's just true around menstrual times for females. Those hormones do change a lot of things and it definitely can create that bloat. Other more specific reasons when we're not looking at the chronic conditions, what you're doing to yourself on a daily basis. So you could just be eating too much sodium or too much starch. So overdoing, especially processed salt or really salty processed foods is a good way to do it because you're just holding so much water and the air in there and oh, that's how it's created. Starch can do the exact same thing. Obviously that's connected to FODMAPs and SIBO. An intolerance to a food, you might have a sensitivity. Spicy foods could maybe do this. Acidic foods could maybe do this. So keeping a food diary really helps you start to figure out what was it that really just, oh, it did not feel good or it was, I had to undo the top buckle. My grandpa used to finish Thanksgiving dinner and just have a seat and undo the top one and sit on the couch. So I don't know if your grandparents did that, but if you have bloating, I can see why. Maybe grandpa was just bloated. That's what made him so grumpy. Keep an eye on the sugar alcohols, even included xylitol, mannitol can be hidden in protein bar or something that you could be consuming. Overeating straight up, it's just, you know, the, the stomach is distended, but you're gonna feel that bloat. That's a fast way and a fast track to it. Too many carbonated beverages might be doing it, whether the alcoholic or non-alcoholic. MSG containing foods, that's gonna not only have a lot of salt in it, but MSG, really bad for your brain as well. Overeating packaged foods, as well as eating too quickly. So when you track these things, you can start to understand when you have those lists of reasons and keep just a little food journal when I'm walking people through our live challenges, they get a workbook and they're keeping track. How did I feel? Why did I feel that way? When you're doing that, it can really be beneficial to help you to understand which of those foods triggered you the most so that you can avoid the bloat. It just doesn't feel good. Okay, fast solutions. What can we do to quickly get rid of this? That's what we wanted to get to. So number one, move. 
just go for a walk. One of the best things you can do post meal, especially after a big one, or maybe if you are just like, oh, I'm bloated after eating, or it's maybe that time of the month, of various reasons why you might have that bloat, get moving. Just a five minute walk, 10 minute walk, 15 minute walk can do wonders for this. I would encourage you to take 12 to 24 ounces of water. Now you might not do that all at one time. Your kidneys may not love that, but slowly sipping on it, I can drink a lot really quickly. So putting a lot of fluid in can help get this thing moving. The last thing we want is the colon slowing down. The colon is where all of your water is absorbed. So the more we can supply to the body, you can start loosening that up. You ever had like the big Thanksgiving meal and you're just like, I just want water. Your body gets so dehydrated because of the overwhelm of sodium and all those ingredients and all that food in the colon is just trying to pull all of it down into your digestive system. So help it out, put a lot of fluids in really quickly and get on the move. Throw in some quick fiber, okay? My favorite ones, if you have prune juice available, that's a decent one to try. I love flax seeds. Those may be easy in a smoothie. You could also sneak in some spinach into a smoothie. Chia seeds are another great option. You could do chia seed pudding. Nurse Living Good has a great one of those that I love. Or you could also just go, if you're not dealing with like a FODMAP side of things, you could maybe go for just a little bit of sauerkraut. Cabbage, you don't wanna overdo, but just a little bit might just give you enough fiber and probiotics to nourish the system. Crank up the potassium. That's quickly going to get you going in the right direction. Potassium is so underrated and we underutilize it and don't get enough oftentimes, especially if we're eating a lot of processed food. Give yourself some electrolytes and some nutrients. Now, you could grab a banana. Research does show that does help bloating when you're consistently having those. However, you are taking on sugar, so not necessarily my favorite. An electrolytes powder, I have several of those. That's an easy way to get potassium in. My favorite is pickle juice. Easy way to get them in, the pickles themselves, or a cucumber. Fast way to get fiber, potassium, multiple vitamins and B vitamins to help out that gut really quickly. Some cucumbers go in it. Finally, if it's nighttime, especially if it's during a menstrual cycle, go for the Epsom salt bath. That release of those muscles helping out that digestive system. You can even do a little bit of massage on the digestive area while you're taking the bath to get everything loosened up for that. And if you wanna add in a little bit of tea, peppermint tea would be a good option to soothe the digestive tract. If you can get a little aloe vera in there, that might help as well. Those are my favorite fast fixes to get you going the right direction for bloating. Overall, on a daily basis, water, 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 electrolytes, 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 especially potassium, those have to go in. Don't overeat, don't overeat processed foods, go easy on the salt, just get real salt. And then if you do have one of those bigger conditions, SIBO, or you're concerned about FODMAPs and you want to understand it more, I made a video about the carnivore diet, and it's actually a very good approach for either one of those. For a small period of time, it's a tool you can put in to get results, and I put that right here as a next step for you.